WWE, and in particular Vince McMahon, has always had to me this morbid fascination with trying to make people look bad in their hometowns. And we know this for years. They've always seemed to do this with Randy Orton whenever they're in St. Louis. They seem to have them lose there. For, I, I don't get it, you know. And, and it's one of these things where they have to know when it's somebody that people actually kind of care about to a degree and you bring them to their hometown that no matter what program you're involved in, no matter what story you're doing, for that particular night, they are going to be the toast of the town. They're going to be the heroes. You know, it goes back to the Team Canada um, shit from 1997 booed in the states but when they would go to the Canada uh, arenas they would freaking be Canadian heroes they were the faces that night Shawn Michaels and DX were the villains go to the states it might be a different story you have to understand that you have to present it in a certain way or book it in a certain way to make it work or if you can't do that then don't go there now, I don't know about you but most anybody could see this coming. Brock Lesnar doesn't appear a lot. Brock Lesnar, for quite a number of WWE fans, is one of the few reasons to still kind of sort of give a fuck about it. So the fact that he doesn't appear a lot, when he does appear, it's something that's supposed to be special, something that's supposed to be big, whether or not it is, is something different. But at the end of the day, you've... You promote him as a big attraction, a special attraction, and you feature him as such like he should be a special attraction. So you know when he comes, um, appears on TV, the fans are going to be really happy to see him. And trying to get him over as a heel is really fighting an uphill battle. And trying to have anybody appear against him as a babyface in a lot of ways, unless they're really, really organically over on their own, is also going to be an incredibly big uphill battle. So you have to know that if you've got a guy like that and you're going to have him appear in his hometown area of Minneapolis, Minnesota, that he's going to be the big conquering hero and he's going to be the talk of the town. He's going to be the guy that everybody loves and whoever he's involved with any type of angle or story against is going to be the fucking devil. So, of course, the WWE, in all of its obliviousness and ridiculousness, namely Vincent K. McMahon, decide that, hey, we just had Goldberg come back last week, or whenever, and it was a big deal, and people were excited about it. We got a little bit of a boost in Raw ratings because Goldberg was back, and, you know, he cuts this promo, and people are excited to, to see him, at least in the short period of time they're going to get him. And you're trying to reestablish Goldberg with the audience. You're trying to get him over as the baby face that people should be trying to get behind. So you decide the very next time you get a chance that you're going to have Brock Lesnar respond in his hometown and expect that to be a good idea. And then halfway through the segment, when predictably the audience does frankly what the fuck they should be doing, which is cheering Brock and shitting all over Goldberg, you're going to sit there and get mad and cut the fucking segment short. Now, sure, Paul Heyman's trying to be a good soldier and sit there and take the blame and the accountability and responsibility for not being good enough on the stick, not cutting a good enough promo to get Goldberg over with the crowd the right way and get Brock over the way he needed to get over. But at the end of the day, I won't blame Heyman for this one. He's just being a good foot soldier for the WWE in this case. Like, frankly, he has going back to his days when he was running ECW and getting funded by the WWE in part. <clears throat> That's not Heyman's fault. Because nobody was going to succeed in that situation. Because you have so many boring fucking vanilla guys being featured week in and week out on television. Now, frankly, Brock is now vanilla and boring in a lot of ways in his presentation of what they do with him. It's a lot of lather, rinse, repeat type of bullshit. But at the end of the day, there's at least a freshness there for when he does appear because he doesn't appear very often. So no matter what, like I referenced a moment ago, you're always going to be facing an uphill battle trying to get people to boo this guy. So you put these guys in a situation where I don't know what the fuck you're trying to accomplish. Are you trying to get Brock booed? Because that's a fucking joke and a half. You're doing this shit in this fucking hometown area. Are you trying to get Goldberg over as the guy that fans should be really getting behind? 
that's not really going to work because one, Goldberg's not freaking there. And two, Brock Lesnar again is in his goddamn hometown. The only way this would work is you have to do one of two things. It's either A, with all the crap they were talking about the video game and Goldberg saying he's coming to Raw, you know, you have to sit there and allude to it and have Goldberg tease it, but not actually confirm he's going to be on Raw. Have a segment booked and confirmed where Brock Lesnar, to close out the show in his hometown, is going to be out there with Paul Heyman to talk about Goldberg, to talk about how he's the conqueror, to talk about this and talk about that. And then towards the end of the night, as the crowd is already really behind Brock and digging him, now all of a sudden here comes Goldberg. At least even in Brock's hometown, you'll get enough fans that were happy to see Goldberg for the first time in a WWE capacity in 12 and a half years that you get that kind of nostalgia pop that would be enough to mask and compensate for all the love Brock is going to get from his hometown audience. And you get caught up in the fact that it's Brock Lesnar and Goldberg fucking face to face. It saves the night. Or B... You don't do anything with them in Minneapolis. You either do the Lesnar appearance the week before or you do it the week after. Anything other than what the fucking WWE did. Now, I don't know if this is a failure of the people around Vince. And frankly, I don't know if it fucking matters. But I know most wrestling fans, as much as the marks in the fucking business try to talk about how stupid the marks outside of the business are, we pretty much all know what's going to happen when you have Brock appear in fucking Minneapolis. We know how this is going to go. If we were smart enough to see that, what is so freaking obvious, you would hope that somebody in the creative thought processes of WWE would be smart enough to see it too. And you would hope that somebody enough would be smart enough to be able to paint an effective enough picture, a creative enough picture, a accurate enough picture, if you will, to Vince McMahon to be able to say, whoa, buddy, I get it, but you need to back up and reconsider, and here's why. If you're trying to get Goldberg over in a certain way, having Brock appear solo in Minneapolis is not going to get the job done. It is going to do everything other than what you want to set out to do. Now, is this a failure of Stephanie and Triple H? Too busy trying to think about making a fourth daughter. And them not being able to sit there and get Vince's ear enough to sit there and say, hey, asshole, this is a really fucking stupid idea. And don't be mad and pissed off when the crowd hijacks this shit and it goes the exact opposite direction of where the fuck you want it to go. And don't get all butthurt and fucking pissed off about it when it goes exactly where the fuck everybody with a brain can fucking see where it's going. It probably doesn't matter, though, because Vince, goddammit, was determined to do it. Vince, goddammit, was going to sit there and say, it doesn't matter, we need Brock Lesnar and we need him now. And this is what you fucking get. So Vince McMahon, don't be pissed off about this because you're a fucking moron if you couldn't see this. And know at the end of the day, it's not anybody else's responsibility but yours because you're the one that has the final say-so. And we know this reeks of Vince McMahon all over the fucking place. Because you would hope Triple H and or Stephanie, but most certainly Hunter, would have enough sense to understand this might not be a good idea to do this in the way that we're going to do it. We could shift it and change it and still make it work and still get a positive out of it. But doing it like this is going to be an epic fucking disaster. Not to mention the fact that right before Hell in a Cell, your main event segment is about Survivor Series, and that's a problem in and of itself. But I get the trying to make Survivor Series feel like a big deal. I don't have a huge problem with that. But you just had Goldberg come back. You do have to reestablish him with the audience. And all you're doing now is you're fucking confusing the audience. I just don't get it. So why are you so pissed about this? Why is this guy so pissed about this? Can you, can you be any more senile? Can you be any more fucking delusional, any more out of touch, to think that this was actually going to go well? Unbelievable. I can't believe that this asshat did not see this and did not see this coming. Anybody with a wrestling brain of any kind or any freaking iota would understand that Brock in his hometown is going to get cheered. And if you want Goldberg to be the one getting the cheers, then maybe, if anything else, you need to sit there and have Brock come out 
in Goldberg's hometown area of Atlanta, let's say, you know, and have him fucking beat down Goldberg there. Then you're insured of, even if he goes to Minneapolis, Brock gets cheered and that's all fine and well, but enough of the fans will be behind Goldberg because he just got the shit kicked out of him in his hometown. You could have at least saved the segment by having Goldberg appear. That wouldn't have been great. Yeah, and there was still the risk of the fans would have still shit on Goldberg anyways. But again, there would have been that nostalgia pop. I think it would have been enough to get you through this night. And that was the whole thing, is advance the story and yet keep the story intact and keep it alive. And Vince McMahon, the dumb fuck that he is, sabotaged all that shit. That's bad enough that you're getting diminishing return out of this force job that you're doing with fucking the sandwich salesman Brock Lesnar anyways. Don't do anything to sabotage it and make it any fucking worse. And then, when you set out to do the absolute one thing that you put on the big thing, the big list of things not to do if you're trying to get Goldberg over in the right way and Brock Lesnar over in the right way, and you fucking do it anyways, don't be pissed off about it and yelling and screaming fucking backstage. It's your fault. You're the idiot, not the fans. Think a little harder next time, jackass.